Alright, so, let's see here. First question, at least towards me, is from Auto X Aim. Kyle, are you and Tebow one with God? And I do not believe so. Uh, I can't speak for myself, or I can't speak for uh, Tebow, but for myself, uh, no. Certainly I'm not. I am just a human, a mere mortal. Um, nowhere near Tebow or God. Um, so I would have to say no on that one. Alright, so... From Bleak, JP7, uh, favorite video games? Let's see. So I'm more of a fan of older video games. The only games that I've played recently are StarCraft 2 and... Well, honestly, that's probably the only one I've played recently. Uh, I used to play Halo 3 a lot with my friends. That was just a fun game to play with friends. Also, Gears of War was a lot of fun to play with friends. Uh, I really like multiplayer games. It's more fun when you can socialize with people. StarCraft is probably the only real 1v1 game I've played uh, probably in my whole life, besides Pokemon, obviously. Uh, also been a fan of the Pokemon games. Obviously, if you've played a trading card game, you probably played the video games at some point. Uh, I was pretty competitive in that for a while, until I realized that the TCG and VGC were on the same days, so that was not cool. Uh, once I found that out, I pretty much gave up the video game thing. Uh, other than that, I guess I like more old school games. Super Nintendo was probably my favorite system. I like uh, Earthbound, I played through that not too long ago. Final Fantasy 3 slash 6, however you want to put it. Uh, Super Mario RPG, also fun. There are a lot of frustrating games like Super Ghouls and Ghosts that are really difficult to play through. Uh, of course, you also have classics like Mortal Kombat. Killer Instinct was fun. Pretty much anything for Super Nintendo I played. Super Mario World. Um, Yoshi's Island was cool. Uh, yeah, that covers a lot of them. From Daniel Musgrave, how old were you when you won your first decent sized tournament? Uh, I'd probably have to think back to when they did the mall tours. It would probably be back in 2000. Uh, there was um, a tournament around here in West Dundee, Illinois that my oldest brother Mike drove me to. Uh, we just kind of heard about these tournaments at the mall tour and I showed up and I played. And I won. Uh, I'm not sure how many people I actually beat, but it was a fairly large tournament. It was actually a single elimination tournament. And when I won, I still have the invitation to the STS I got somewhere. Uh, but I did not get a trip to the STS. It was in New Jersey. I think it was Sea Caucus, New Jersey. Uh, I wanted to go, but my parents wouldn't take me because it was too far away. Uh, so I actually won a qualifier, I guess. To get into the STS, I would have had some buys if I showed up. But that was probably the first tournament I won. And man, that must have been 10 or 11 years by now. <laughs> um, man, I actually don't know. Probably 11 or maybe even 12 years ago. Uh, I think the latest set at the time was Jim Heroes. So, yeah, long time ago. Alright, from Twister4815, what are some of your favorite hobbies besides Pokemon TCG? Uh, my favorite would be StarCraft. Uh, I play StarCraft 2, I watch it. If you haven't actually watched StarCraft 2, it's really fun, really cool. Um, check it out. There's a bunch of different streams you can watch at all times, every day pretty much. They have TV studios in, in Korea, and there's I think there's one in the US now for the IGN Pro League um, but yeah Korea there's a whole TV studio they broadcast almost every day just StarCraft 2 professional StarCraft 2 so it's neat to see uh, like a whole professional broadcast just for video games so um, if you've never checked that out I would do that it's really cool other than that I enjoy just sports too uh, basketball was always one of my favorites but I'll play almost anything Pretty normal person, to be honest. Uh, nothing too crazy. I guess the only crazy thing would be StarCraft, so... 
Those are my favorite hobbies, I guess. Uh, let's see. From that one guy, 293, have you tested with Next Destinies? And if you have, what do you think? Uh, I have not. I'm still in City Championship mode. I don't know how you can test with Next Destinies when you don't know what's in the set yet. Uh, but, no, I don't know. Let's see, from Jack Eiler, do you think Mewtwo EX is all hype? If not, what do you think the best deck will be with Mewtwo? No, this card is definitely not all hype. It is extremely good. It has 170 hit points, and you can put Eevee Light on it, and that's dumb. Uh, the attack is very good as well. Both attacks are very good. I don't know what the best deck will be with Mewtwo. I haven't really gotten into that yet. But, um, yeah, it's going to be good. I don't know if it'll be worth the $65 or whatever it's being sold for, but it's very good, and it'll be played a lot. Alright, let's see... <clears throat> from C. Peterick, did you ever play Zombies Eat My Neighbors? Of course, uh, that was a very frustrating game as well. Uh, really tough game to be honest. Uh, really fun. I mean, you're just a couple of kids shooting up zombies the whole time. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think I've ever actually beaten that game now that I think about it. Really, really tough. If you haven't played that, I would check that out. It's a classic. Um, let's see. You guys are just talking about how many people are actually watching. No, it kind of freaked out at the beginning, but there are not 400 people watching this. Um, from Bruno M93. Puka, do you speak Spanish? I want to know. Um, I took Spanish in college. I actually have enough credits to qualify as a minor for Spanish. But um, I like to refer to it as classroom Spanish. Uh, I understand the fundamentals of the language and the grammar and all that. But if you sit down and try to talk with me in Spanish, I probably wouldn't be able to hold a conversation. The speed is just much higher with a native speaker than it would be in a classroom. I never actually studied abroad, so I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I can understand it. Uh, I'm better at written Spanish than I am at spoken Spanish, so um, I can kind of speak it, I guess, would be the answer to that question. From Michael Pramwat, who is your favorite StarCraft II player? I actually don't know. Uh, it used to be Without a doubt, it would be Jinro. Um, I still am a big fan of Jinro, of course. Uh, otherwise, I would have to say probably QXE. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. I actually worked with him a little bit on a project he had for StarCraft II Research Initiative. I worked with him a little bit trying to figure out how to attack the game, uh, just research why people were winning. And all that stuff. So that was cool. Uh, I actually met him as well. He's actually going to be around here this weekend. I might go see if I can go to that tournament and catch up with him. But um, yeah, I guess it would be QXC. He was a cool guy in person. And I really like watching him play too. And uh, he had that famous all kill on um, GSTL. So yeah, I'm a big fan of him. Otherwise, it would be probably MVP just because he is the best. From, I'll just say it's Adam Garcia. Did you watch MVP versus Lucky? Oh my god, so good. Uh, I actually fell asleep after the first game when MVP went mech. Went like an idiot. Uh, I didn't watch the rest. I just assumed MVP would win. So, um, no. <laughs> um... From Michael Pramwatt, why was I never able to hold a sniper rifle in Halo 3? Alright, so, I was in Halo 3. Uh, by that point, Krim had stopped playing, which is why I was able to hold one. But in Halo 2, when I would play with Krim, uh, I 
I mean, I wasn't very good. I just started playing, and Krim was like, he thought he was the man. He thought he could beat anybody in Halo 2. Um, so, when a noob like me would try to go pick up a sniper rifle, he would honestly kill me to take it. Uh, he would betray me. Even though we're on the same team, I would go pick up a sniper rifle, and he would just be like, no, and kill me, and then pick it up. And then eventually, it would just be me walking towards the sniper rifle, and him shooting at me, and then I have to turn around, and yeah, that was him shooting at me, not the other team, and he would go pick it up. And so eventually I would just not go after it at all, and I would have to be uh, dejected and go for just the piddly little dual-wield weapons. And uh, thanks to Krim, I never actually got good at the game, because he never let me hold a real weapon, so... Yeah, that's what happened. But when Halo 3 came and uh, Krim wasn't playing, I got to do whatever I wanted. And that's when I actually started to be decent at the game. Uh, let's see. From Bleak JP 7 what's your rough record against the other Top Cut members when it comes to legit, no gimmick format, etc., Pokemon games? Um... To be honest, I haven't actually played against Top Cut members too often. I've played against Krim the most. Um, I know against Pram we probably have a somewhat even record. Uh, we've only played a few times in tournaments and they've been at like marathons, so they don't really count that much. We're probably actually like, I think I have like a 2-1 advantage over him, maybe, in tournaments. Um, in practice games we split them. There was a series at Worlds 2010 where we were playtesting for Worlds where I beat his Guardy with uh, my Lux Chomp over and over thanks to Miss Magius and Ambi Palm and um, other just stupid tricks. And it tilted him enough where he actually took the Dust Nor out of his deck and played Pokemon reversals just to beat me. Thankfully, we convinced him not to run those at Worlds, but... um. That was the one time where I got the best of him for a little while. I think overall we're probably even in games though. Um, Drew, I haven't played against a whole lot. When I do, um, I'm actually known for being very good online. Like whenever I play online, I just have a very good record. Uh, I've beaten Drew quite a bit online. But then when we play in real life, we're probably about even. Um, he probably has the upper hand in real games. But yeah, online, I don't think I've ever really lost to Drew. Now, my rivalry with Krim dates back quite a few years. Now, in the beginning, I think one of the first times I played against Krim, um, he was playing a scissor. This was, you gotta, you gotta remember this is way back. This is like Sky Ridge, those cards, uh, Expedition, the E-Series sets. I played against Krim. He was using um, a Scissor Muck Ferret deck, which was the big deck at the time. And I was using my trusty Meganium deck. And I thought I was just clever because there was this Ladian that for 3 energy did 50 uh, with Swift. And it got past all metal energies, all effects. And the Scissor had 80 hit points, but it would have Goldberry. So it heals 40 damage off of your Pokemon in between turns. So I would have to put a strength charm on the lady and hit the scissor for 60. Gold Barry would bring him down to 20. And then I would play a second strength charm and knock out the scissor. And this was my grand plan at the time. I thought I was clever. Uh, in reality, it was stupid and horrible. But uh, when I played against Krim, this was the infamous start to our um, series against each other. The first time we really got to know each other. Because he freaked out on me so bad. Uh, I played one strength charm on the lady and, and hit him for 60. And he took like a 10 minute turn just sitting there debating with himself. Is this guy stupid enough to play two strength charms in his deck? Now I know he's stupid enough to play Meganium. He's stupid enough to play lady and, and he's stupid enough he already played one strength charm. But does he actually play two? And he sat there for 10 minutes and finally he said alright. There's no way you play two strength charms. Nobody's that stupid. And then I played the second strength charm, and I won the game. 
and he went on like a 15 minute rant about how stupid I am, how bad I am at this game, how lucky I am, and how he's the greatest player in the world, and how I should never win. So um, from there, <laughs> um, we played a lot, and he actually had the upper hand on me for quite a while. But then when he came back, um, I mean, he didn't play for a while. He would play every now and then, but he didn't start going to tournaments again until 2009. And I think since 2009, I've had a very, very good record against him. Um, in the beginning, he really beat me quite a lot online. He was, I mean, he just dominated me. But um, I think at this point, I have such a good record at him that I have maybe a slight lead in our all-time series. So, uh, I have not done poorly against anyone in our group, I guess. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I gotta scroll up because that took so long. Let's see, card captured Puka. Do you read comics, novels, or anything? Uh, no, I don't really read. I'm dumb. <laughs> um, I wish I read more. I use, I've read through Harry Potter. That's probably the extent of my reading. <clears throat> oh wait, I've also read uh, Gold Dust, his book. If you know who that is, The Wrestler. That's probably the most recent book I've read. It's a good book, though. Uh, from Moon663, favorite movie? I don't know. I'm not a big movie buff. I go for the comedies, the romantic comedies, usually. Um, overall, it would probably be a tie between Wedding Crashers and Dodgeball. Uh, I love both those movies. I actually think I like Dodgeball a little more. It's got a lot of very subtle humor, which I love a lot. So, uh, if I had to pick one, I'd go with Dodgeball. I love that movie. Uh, why does the Top Cut hate Adam Garcia? Why not? Uh, we don't hate Adam Garcia. We're just, um, I don't know, very strict. Let's see, from Sergil, uh, favorite board game. That's interesting. Uh, uh, when I grew up, I loved Life, the game of life. That was one of my favorite games. Nowadays, I'm not really sure what my favorite board game was, would be. Uh, I'm always a fan of Monopoly, even though that game takes so long, takes forever. Um, I mean, recently I played Dominion, which is more of a card game than a board game, but, uh, right now that would be the other game I play. Play that online. Which is fun as well. So, alright, let's see. From Char 3rd, do you think they'll ever make a Pokemon TCG video game for 3DS like they did for Game Boy Color? I sure hope so. One of my favorite games was the trading card game for Game Boy Color. Uh, I've played through that game a bunch of times. And I think, honestly, everybody loved that game. I'm sad that they never really made a sequel. I think they actually did in Japan. Um, but we never got it. I've tried to play through an emulator of it, but I just didn't get through it. Um, I wish they would make another game. The thing I worry about is that, uh, the rules got a lot more complicated than they were back then. There's so many technicalities and stuff. Like, look at TCG Online. Um, I wish they would put more effort into TCG Online before they made a video game. Uh, I would love that. Much more. Look at how much stuff has gone wrong with uh, PTCGO. Uh, I, I mean, when you look at that, how can they manage to make a video game for the trading card game if they can't manage to do that? So, <clears throat> I, I would rather see the online version first. Uh, from Twister, 4815... What kind of music do you listen to, and who is your favorite artist? Now, I listen to a wide variety of music. I'm not a big fan of music nowadays. Uh, most pop and stuff like that is bad. I don't like Justin Bieber. I don't like Katy Perry. I don't like um, whatever's on the radio now. Not a big fan. But, uh, honestly, I listen to mostly rock stuff. I'll listen to other stuff every once in a while. Um... My favorite artist, probably, 
a band most people haven't heard of. I like Billy Talent. It's a good band. Um, my favorite band for a long time was 311. So that kind of stuff is what I listen to. From X Yogi Bear 11 Puka, why did you play Meganium for so long? And um, I honestly don't know. I can take you back to the story where Meganium all began, though. So, back, I think the year was 2001, where was a stadium challenge in Rosemont, Illinois, and I had not played for a while. Uh, I was not up to date with Pojo or anything like that, and I looked online to see what was winning, what was doing well, and the big thing was for Alligator. For Alligator was it. That was the defining deck of the format. Uh, it was just dominating everything. You would just use Downpour and Misty's Wrath and Trash Exchange and get tons and tons of energy into your discard pile. And then you shuffle them back in with Riptide and repeat over and over and over until you win the game. You would get so many one-hit knockouts that it would just destroy everything. So, for Alligator, hands down, was the dominant deck. So I looked at for Alligator and I said, all right. If everybody's playing this for alligator, I'm just going to play something that beats it. So, what is for alligator week two? Grass. So, my, I was probably like 13 or 14 at the time, my little mind thought, yes, grass weakness will trump for alligator. And uh, I saw he's weak to grass, but he had 128 points. Meganium only did 40. Meganium was the, the Pokemon I chose to run. So I needed something that could do 60 so I could knock out this Feraligator in one hit. And I saw this Heracross that did 60 for 3. Um, the downside was if you flip tails it did nothing. But I was set. This was my deck. This is my counter to Feraligator. So I walked into this tournament and I was plowing through people left and right. I um, Oh, I also had a Magmar in my deck that did 20 for 2. I thought I was being clever. I saw Steelix resisted grass, and with the metal energy, I would never actually be able to knock out a Steelix, so I thought, I'm going to run this fire Pokemon. I'm going to show Steelix what's up. Uh, not realizing that Magmar actually doesn't do anything against Steelix, because, well, metal energy, and I'm only doing 40 damage at most. So, um, one of the rounds I faced an Erica's Victory Ball deck, also geared towards beating Fralligator. And, turns out that's weak to fire. And it's got 80 hit points. So, um, I actually powered up my Magmar early in one of the rounds and plowed through an entire Erica's Victory Bell deck using Tail Slap with Magmar. I think that's what the attack was called. And I beat somebody, and he actually, like, cursed up a storm and just left and said, I concede. He was so angry that he lost to a Magmar. And I was like, well, that's kind of rude. Um, my tech worked, though. <laughs> and I thought I was so smart that Magmar actually won me a game. And then I played the next round against a Typhlosion Blaine's Arcanine deck, which, by all means, I lose to 99% of the time. I figured my only chance was to put a Focus Band on a Heracross and go for it. And he knocked it out with Quilava. I flipped Tails on the Focus Band, and I was pretty much dead. But then he goes to take his first prize, and lo and behold, there's no prizes out there. So he gets a game loss. Uh, so I am just lucking my way through this tournament. Then there comes another round where I'm facing a Crobat deck. And he's got a Focus Band on a Pichu, zapping all of my stuff. And I confidently promote Heracross. And I use Megahorn. I flip for the Baby Flip. Heads. I flip for Megahorn. Heads. He flips for Focus Band. Tails. And I knock out a Pichu. He sends up another one. The exact same thing happens. And he's just sitting there shaking his head. And I'm just sitting there taking my prizes like, yeah, this is how the deck's supposed to work. And, um, I ended up, like, X and 1 <laughs> with my Meganium deck. And, uh, I lost in top 8 to Tom Dozel, actually. Uh, because I used Eek with Cleffa and didn't flip for the baby rule. And, uh, shuffled my hand into my deck. So I lost my, my whole hand. I had to put out a 7th prize. He got to take a prize. Then he knocked out Cleffa and I lost. So, um, 
that's where the glory of Meganium started, and from there, I always just kind of thought it was a solid deck. For Alligator, it continued to be good for a long time, and then water decks really were good through those times. Um, Kingdra was good, for Alligator made a comeback as well, and there was a water-resistant Meganium, so I started to play that. And it was just my favorite Pokemon after a while. Oh yeah, Kabutops was also uh, a big card at one point. Kabutops Steelix. So, uh, I don't know, I just liked it. And uh, it was my thing, so I stuck with it. And that is my story of Meganium. So, do -do -do -do. Um... <laughs> From the True Sniper, how do you play Pokemon? Uh, I would encourage you to visit PokemonTCG.com and play through the tutorials and stuff on there to learn. Uh, it's free. It's easy to learn. And uh, go check that out if you really want to learn how to play Pokemon. Uh, account number three. <clears throat> if you could change one thing about the format right now, what would it be? Honestly, I don't like Pokemon Catcher. I wish it was gone. Um, but I don't think that is the biggest problem. I think the biggest problem is the first turn rules. Who goes first decides way too many games. Um, it disgusts me when a person doesn't get to draw a card. Um, that happens way too often still. I've seen Tyrogue be played more recently. And um, I don't like the fact that the person going first gets <clears throat> an absurd advantage. That's not fair. Uh, that needs to be fixed. That's kind of ruined this format and the previous format, I think. From Bruno M93, do you think six corners will be a strong deck with Next Destinies? Uh, again, I don't know what's in Next Destinies besides the EXs, but the EXs alone will make that deck much worse. You you will have to remodel it completely. Um, Verizian's going to be bad. Uh, most of the dragons are not going to be good anymore. Against, I mean, they don't stack up well against Mewtwo, so uh, I really don't know. We'll have to see. I have not done any testing with the new set because, again, we don't know what's in it. And I can't give you really any answers. Let's see. Jason Kaczynski, ever play the Pokemon board game? Yes. Um, if I remember correctly, that thing did suck quite a bit. But I did play it. I owned it. So, um, it was a lot of fun. I don't know. Um, I don't know where it went. I wish I still had it so I could play it. I just remember you had to do battles and get through the Elite Four and all that stuff. But, um, I would like to play it again if somebody has it. I don't really remember it. Oh, and there you go. Where he says you battle the Elite Four and stuff. Yep. Uh, let's see... <laughs> uh, this is a loaded question, but I guess we'll take it. From Texas Jimbo, who are the most overrated and underrated players in the game? Um, this is always a tough question to answer because people rate different uh, people. Di uh, people rate other players very differently. Um, if you ask one person, you'll say somebody will say that uh, Puka sucks. And somebody else will say Pook is the best in the world, and uh, it's hard to get a good gauge on what people actually think about players. Uh, I think when you see overrated, most people say uh, Yamato is the most overrated player in the world. Because, uh, honestly, some of his decks are not good. Um, but at the same time, I think he does not have time to practice for the world's formats. You know, Japan plays a different format all year, and then they have to show up to Worlds, play something completely different, and he still ends up doing well. So, uh, in one sense, he is overrated, but I really don't think, overall, he's very overrated. Um, he is just overrated in the sense that people think he is unbeatable and godly, when in reality, nobody is like that. Uh, when you think about underrated players, probably up-and-coming people that you haven't heard of, um, 
I can't really think of any off the top of my head. And I really think that uh, Krim is one of the underrated players in the game. He is very good. He gets absurdly unlucky at tournaments. Uh, a lot of it is self-inflicted. Well, not a lot of it, but some of it is. Like at Nationals where he forgot to write communication on his deck list and he had to play without them for the entire duration of the event. But even without Pokemon communication, you realize he did make top 64 at Nationals. Zero communications in his deck. So uh, that kind of speaks to his skill level in some way. So um, I think he is the most underrated player in the game. Uh, we like to joke with him a lot that you know he hasn't won anything, but uh, he is very good. I don't know about that whole best, greatest theor theoretical mind in the game stuff, but um, he's very, very good. Let's see. Oof. From Jace Patrick, who is the worst Masters Division National Champion in Pokemon history? Oof. That is a loaded question. Um, it's tough to tell. Uh, when I think when you look at it, it's too soon to say anything about uh, Justin. I mean, he is the, the most recent winner. Um, give him some time before you say he's underrated or overrated. But um, I think you go back to 2004, <laughs> the first national champion, which was J.C. Sturkey. Uh, nobody really ever heard from him again. That was kind of a once-in-a-lifetime win for him. Uh, I think that might be the worst person to win. Just because I've never seen him do well at a tournament ever again. And I actually don't even know what happened to him. Um, the best, uh, I'm not going to say myself, because that's just pompous and stupid. Uh, the best probably would be uh, Chris Fullop. I mean, for as wacky as his decks are. He is tactically very sound at the game, and uh, he understands everything, so I would probably put him up there. From, I think that's Blackout, but it's an L in there somewhere, but um, we'll say it's Blackout. Do you have any routines or superstitions before a tournament or a game? No, not really. Um, I don't really know... If I do anything wacky before a tournament, I don't get much sleep, that's for sure. But, um, I don't really sleep before tournaments, I don't really eat much before tournaments, my stomach gets a little weird. Uh, I still get nervous before tournaments, uh, big ones anyway. So, no, I don't really have any superstitions, um, other than not being prepared for them. Um, what else... Daniel Musgrave, are you on a desktop or a laptop? This is actually a laptop that was donated to us uh, by someone who loves what we're doing. And he helped us out quite a bit at Worlds. Um, donated this laptop. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, I use this laptop for everything for the Top Cut. So uh, it's a very nice laptop. What else? From MJ92, what's the best comeback you've ever made? Uh, I could go on for days about this, trust me. I, I have a stupid talent, uh, or ability I guess, I don't even know if it's a talent, but I am able to remember pretty much everything that happens in every Pokemon game I've ever played. So, uh, I remember every epic comeback that I've ever made and every time I've been screwed out of a game so uh, let's just keep it to one I guess um, I guess the big one would be at Nationals in 2010 I think would be one of my biggest ones uh, I was playing against uh, I think his name was Jason from Oregon can't remember his last name and he uh, it was, he was playing Luxchomp, I was playing Dialga Garchomp, and 
the first game I didn't get to draw a card. I started with a lone guard chomp. He flipped over an Ambi Palm G with a double callus and knocked me out. Didn't get to draw a card. Game two, I six owed him. It was kind of a blowout. He didn't really get set up that game and I just dominated him. And then the third game, uh, I thought I was going to win. I thought I had a perfect start. I um I think I started with like a call energy. I got a ball toy and uh I was just perfectly set up. I had uh, the cards to get turn two clay doll in my hand. And um even if I didn't get to use cosmic power I had an Ooxie to set up and I was just set for the game I think. So turn two I get my clay doll into play. I go to use cosmic power and he power sprays it. So I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, that's not really a big deal. I still have the Ooxie in my hand. Even if I don't, it's pretty unlikely that he can actually knock out the Clay Doll next turn. So I'll just have another Cosmic Power next turn. I'll be okay. So I go to play the Ooxie to set up just in case he could knock out the Clay Doll. And he power sprays a second time. So now I'm sitting at one card in my hand. That's not a supporter either. And I have to pass. So his turn, sure enough... He has the Garchomp, level X, double callus, energy gain, knockout clay doll. And I have one card in my hand, and really absolutely nothing. My Chadot was prized as well, couldn't get that. Um, really had no options the whole game. And he got up, I think, three or four prizes before I did anything. And my only hope was that he would just run out of stuff, because he was using nothing but Cyrus, um... He played all four Cyrus's Conspiracy. I had hoped he would run out of resources. And my favorite Pokemon in the deck, Driftblim FB, came up. Um, for whatever reason, he put down a Lucario GL. And I don't remember why. It was to knock out something so he could use Bite with Luxray, I think. Uh, I don't even know what it was for. But he put down a Lucario GL, which made all weaknesses times two. So all of his Uxies and Azelfs, or there's an Azelf and a couple Uxies on the bench, and then a Lucario. These are all weak to Psychic. All can be knocked out in one hit by this Drift Blim. So I sent it up and I prayed. I knocked out one thing, I knocked out another thing, and we just eventually got into this war back and forth, where I never really thought I would win the game. I was still down by an immense amount of prizes. Uh, he got a nice, bright look, knockout. So he got down to one prize, and I was still at like four prizes. And if you ever play against Lux Chomp, you just know. I mean, if they're down to one prize, it's only a matter of time before they get that last one. There's Luxray, there's Garchomp. There's no way you can avoid it. And uh, I was just conceded, basically, to the fact that I was going to lose this game. I was just going to try, but I was going to lose anyway. Um, I was like 99% sure I was going to lose. But the only thing that kept me in the game was that Lucario. That I could just knock out these Uxies and the Azelf in one hit. So one by one I was knocking stuff out. And um, there was one turn where he put down a Garchomp C. And um, just attacked my Drifflin for 60 I think with Luxray. And I didn't have my own Garchomp in play. Uh, otherwise I could have Dragon Rushed and knocked out his Garchomp. Because if he does 80... I have plenty of stuff on my bench I can get knocked out. So I think about it, and I'm like, um, I need a turn to get my Garchomp down. But if I let him sit there um, and play trainers, he can play an energy gain and a double callus. And I know he has an energy gain in his hand. He just forgot to play it that turn. So uh, I actually put down this Garchomp C. I pokey turn my Drift Blim. I set up a Dialga. And I used Deafen for zero on his Luxray. And he's like, alright, that's kind of strange, but okay. And then he goes, he puts a double callus on his guard job. He's all ready to win the game. And he goes, energy gate. Oh no. <laughs> and he can't play the energy gain down. So uh, that one turn of Deafen saved me the game. Because he couldn't play the trainer. And uh, then he had to actually pass instead. Or just hit me with, or with Luxray for 60. And then I got my Garchomp out, I uh, leveled up, knocked out his bench Garchomp that had the double callus on it now, and then eventually Driftblim came out for the last prize. Uh, Driftblim took five prizes that game, <laughs> uh, knocked out five Pokemon, and Garchomp got the one big one. So that was a really super close game. It was game three in like top 
32 or top 16. I think it was top 32. So it was a huge game. And uh, I made this huge comeback to actually stay in the tournament. And that was the year uh, I made top four and lost to Conley in top four. I ended up winning. Uh, let's see. So yeah, there's that story. <laughs> uh, let's see. From Soviet Greyhound, uh, the most arrogant slash cocky player you have played against, and explain how he was arrogant slash cocky. I haven't really played against many people who are arrogant or cocky. Um, I don't really know how to answer that question. I've never really had anybody get up in my face, really. Um... I've had very few bad experiences playing Pokemon. My worst one, still to this day, is probably the Chuck story, where I'm playing against Chuck uh, in Regionals 2005 in the top four, and the winner of our game gets to go to Worlds. Game one, he hits like three out of three Pokemon reversals and just uh, basically just destroys me the first game. Game two, it's more a normal game. I um, beat him. And then game three... Uh, it's just this big game. The winner gets to go to Worlds, uh, wins more scholarship money, etc. And I start with a Dunsparce, which is the best Pokemon you want to start with. For one energy, it lets you search for three basics. Put them on your bench, and that basically sets you up. And so he starts with this Shroomish, which is a 1-1 Breloom line that was meant to beat uh, Rocklock at the time, which totally did not work at all. But um, he played this Breloom line. He starts with a Shroomish. That for one colorless does 10 and puts me to sleep. So he puts me to sleep. And my Dunspark stays asleep. So I don't get to use uh, Strike and Run. Unfortunately. The Dunspark stays asleep. Um, and my next card was actually a Heal Energy. Which would have woken up the Dunsparce. Go figure. But um, he gets his turn 2 Breloom. And <laughs> knocks out... The Dunsparce, and all I have left is a Slugma, and he knocks that out as well. Which, I mean, is already depressing enough. You're trying to get to Worlds, and you lose. I was probably like 15 or 16 at the time, so not the most mature person in the world. So I already took it kind of hard. And then there's Chuck, who just gets up and starts screaming and dancing around me. He's just going nuts. He's like, woohoo! And he points in my face and starts laughing and says, ha ha, I screwed you out of worlds. And um, he starts going around, dancing in front of me, saying how he's the best in the world. And uh, he's going to worlds, blah, blah, blah. And I was actually, like, so heartbroken that um, I was actually on, like, the verge of tears. And, um, like, to this day, I'll never forget that, like, how big of a jerk can you be to do that? I mean, Chuck was just excited, but... You don't do that. There's a lesson. Don't do that to people. <clears throat> but, one thing I remember about that day is, um, Jason Krasinski was there as well, and I had just pretty much screwed him out of the top eight. I, I had, like, a god start. Two out of the three games, I won an unwinnable matchup. And he was so embarrassed for Chuck. That he came over and apologized <laughs> on behalf of Chuck. So, uh, I remember that as well. So, thank you, Jason. That was uh, one of the nicest things someone's done, at least. Uh, let's see. What is the worst card ever, in your opinion? This is um, a highly debated topic. Um, there are many cards that could fit this description, one of them being the Arcanine from Supreme Victors that would be bad in any format, but you have to keep in mind this was printed at the same time as Garchomp Sea Level X, the exact same set. So, um, I think for one fire, three colorless or something, it does 50 combustion, which is just terrible. Um, 
That is probably the worst Pokemon of all time. Next to Base said Ghastly, that's very bad. Uh, otherwise, there's been a lot of bad trainers. I would have to say, I think it was Minions of Team Rocket might be one of the worst. It was Flip Two Coins. If either are Tails, your turn ends immediately. Uh, but if Heads, you got to take a Pokemon on their bench and put it back in their hand. Totally not worth the risk. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's probably one of the worst, and I think maybe the worst is Alf Lithograph, the first one that just says, shuffle your deck. Why? There are plenty of cards that just shuffle your deck, and then you get an added bonus. Um, like, even Pokeball is better than that. There are, I don't think there's a worse card than that. Um, even cards like Charity which are obviously terrible, had some use, some minor use, but Alpha Lithograph is just bad. That's probably the worst. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> From Saya Sandstorm, which world's champion has a blonde fetish? Uh, I'll let you figure that one out. <clears throat> It's not too hard to figure that one out. From Jace Patrick, who made the call at the Florida Marathon? That would be Skyline Up. He made the call. Uh, let's see. From Ben Donzu, what are your thoughts on the first few cards came out and Haymaker was the best deck? Electabuzz, Hitmonchan, Sneasel. Um, I think you're confusing formats. Sneasel did not come out for a long time, but uh, originally the game was not great. Um... <laughs> It was just full of energy removal, super energy removal, gust of wind, Professor Oak. The game was not that good when it first started. Um, it it was it got a lot worse. It wasn't bad at the beginning, but then it got a lot worse with uh, Rocket Sneak Attack. Um, Last was pretty brutal, and the Rocket's Trap cards that would just completely demolish your hand and give you no chance of winning the game. Uh, and the game didn't start to stabilize until Cleffa came out. You would play four Cleffas just so you could eek and withstand all these ridiculous trainers. So um, the game got better once Cleffa came out. I don't really know how to answer your question. Sorry. Uh, alright, so from MJ92, who got you into playing Pokemon? And this, pretty simple question. When I was younger, I mean, everybody here was probably around when Pokemon was the big fad. Uh, it took over the world. Pokemon was just everywhere. It was everything. Uh, you couldn't even find booster packs anywhere. And at this time, my brothers were into it, and I just kind of got dragged into it. My brother, I remember he ordered a booster box of base set off of the Wizards of the Coast website, and we got it, and we would just build decks and start playing with each other. So I played with my brothers. That's who got me into the game. And my oldest brother is the one who took me to my first tournament, so um, he is really the one who got me into the game. They don't play anymore, but I continued with it, and I'm um, still playing today, so... I owe everything to my brothers, I guess. They got me into it. It was a lot of fun. From Card Captor, you ever play Magic the Gathering? Uh, I have played a few times, not seriously. Again, I've just played with my brothers. Um, they don't play too seriously. I haven't really gotten into it. I kind of promised myself that I would only play one card game because I get 
when I play something, I sort of commit to it. So Pokemon was my one thing to commit to. I don't think I could split time between Pokemon and Magic. There's just not enough time in the world, uh, especially now that I started running the top cut. So um, I've played Magic before. I've heard a lot of great things about it, but uh, I haven't really gotten into it too much. From Bleak JP7, what was your favorite tournament that you played in that you didn't win? Hmm. Uh, tough question. I mean, you don't really remember tournaments you don't win, and if you don't win, something probably happened that you remember that makes you bitter that you didn't win. Uh, but let's see. If I had to pick one. Uh, I'm not really sure. I guess maybe the first Worlds. I think I think the first Worlds, uh, 2004. Uh, that was the first one I went to. The first Nintendo Worlds. For me, that was the first time that I really got to meet everybody that I talked to online. Uh, I would talk to people constantly online with uh, Instant Messenger, and we used IRC back at the time. So I would talk to these people on a daily basis, but I never knew who they were. And this was even before, like, Facebook and MySpace, so people didn't even know what each other really looked like. So you would just kind of show up and then be like, are you... Okay, so you are Martin, okay. Um, so um, I showed up really not knowing anybody. That was the first time where I really met everybody. I remember meeting, uh, like... It was the first time I met Chris Bianchi. That was the first time I met uh, Martin Moreno. Uh, that was the first time I met just a bunch of people. Pat Kennedy, who was Nike PK. Uh, he played back then. Uh, I think that, was, that might be the first time I actually met Pramalot. Uh, I don't think it was the first time I met Drew, but I lost to Drew in that tournament. Still bitter about that. Uh, I forgot I, that when I answered that question before, Drew has... Uh, an advantage on me. He's 1-0 against me lifetime in tournaments. So that was just the the best time I ever had because it was the first time I really got to meet everybody. And uh, it was just a lot of fun because we were all just a bunch of kids who talked with each other online and then this is the first time we got to meet each other in real life. Uh, that was the only year I actually made Top Cut at Worlds. I made Top 16 that year. So that was also a perk, but uh, it was just the most fun. Pokemon events are more fun, just the social aspect. Not winning or losing, really. Uh, it's more about the people who are there. That's what makes it fun to go to. Uh, Alright, from SoCal Matt, what beats Troll? Uh, you lost to Crim's Durant, so I will say it loses to Durant. And probably quite badly if you lost to Crim. From Jace Patrick, most attractive Pokemon player. Uh, I don't really know. Um, we should put up a poll. We'll see what you guys think. Uh, we'll see who's the most attractive Pokemon player. Because I haven't really thought about that one. Can't really think of anyone off the top of my head. But, um, yeah. We should take a poll one day, see what you guys think. From Sergil, Super Bowl picks. Right now, um, it's tough. I'm kind of thinking uh, Houston is a big underdog. People are kind of writing them off because Schaub is out. I could really see them making the Super Bowl still. They're a really, really good team. So I actually think Houston will go to the Super Bowl. Uh, and then Green Bay, of course, I'm a Packers fan. So I think the Packers will go back. And those will be the two teams. From Adam Garcia, what race is your main in SC2 now, and why did you choose it? I've always been Terran uh, from the start. I just played Terran. I don't know, that was just kind of the default race. When you play StarCraft, you play the campaign as Terran, so I just figured I'd be Terran. Um... 
And plus you get battle cruisers, which are awesome. So, I don't really know. I just kind of stuck with Terran. They turned out to be good, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've I've had fun playing with Zerg. <clears throat> uh, I'm not a big fan of using Protoss. It's kind of boring. But, um, yeah, I'm Terran. MJ92, what's your opinion on Prism Energy? Uh, I don't know why basic Pokemon needed more help. Um, they already have Eviolite, and they're also very good already. So I don't know why you needed a Rainbow Energy, just for basics. Uh, I am not a big fan of that. But, it's going to be good, it'll be played. Um, and actually, I'm going to grab some more water. I'll be right back, so feel free to keep asking questions, and when I come back, I will keep answering them. So, be right back. Doggy. Hi, Doug. Uh, favorite SC2 build? Now, I don't really cheese much or do all ins when I play. Uh, I like to play longer games, but when I do, my favorite build was always a Thor Rush. That was just my favorite build because it just seems so silly. You just rush to this giant Thor and just kind of try to bust down your opponent. Uh, surprisingly, it works well a lot of the time, but. Um, <laughs> Once you get higher up in the ranks, people figure out how to stop that. But it, it was still fun when I did it. Uh, I love the Thor. It's a really clunky big unit, but it's fun to use. Let's see, from Jack Eiler, what is your least favorite deck ever? Oof, ever. Uh, it's, it's a lot of years. Uh, I think... I wouldn't have said this like a month ago, but after getting back from the Florida Marathon and playing a few games of base through Neo 4, I think Slow King Murkrow is my least favorite deck ever. That should not have existed. Um, Slow King was way too powerful. Um, Mind Games was a ridiculous Pokemon power that was translated incorrectly and never got fixed. So it turned into an un it went from an unplayable card. Because it was only supposed to work when it was active, which is just bad. Uh, it went from unplayable, in that sense, to absolutely broken because mind games work from the bench. So, I think Slow King, Slow King Dex period were my least favorite. They were too good. Uh, it was just dumb. <laughs> Chris Bianchi, I knew this would happen. Um, what has been your favorite game that you've played versus me? Uh, I know which one you want me to bring up, uh, so I'll just go ahead and do it. Right when uh, Platinum came out, which was the first set with all the SP Pokemon, I was using a Dialga deck against Chris, who was playing uh, a deck with, I think it was just Electrode, which uh, Secret Wonders Electrode, and then basically all he wanted to do was play Rayquaza. Uh, the Legends Awakened Rayquaza. So... Uh, we played a game, and uh, I mean, obviously, it's not a serious deck. You just use speed gain and flip a bunch of coins, and then try to do 150. It shouldn't ever work. And, um, played against him, sent up a Dialga, and knocked out like an Electrode, and he just confidently promotes Rayquaza, and uses speed gain, and it's like, yeah, you're not gonna power spray that, because it's stupid. He has no energy on Rayquaza. What are the odds that he's gonna hit three or four heads, and then we're playing on Apprentice, and I just see heads, 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 heads. He gets four energy from the discard pile, puts him on the Rayquaza, and I think it was like Sky Judgment, that's the name of the attack. Uh, 150 damage, knockout Dialga. And I'm like, there's no way that just happened. But, alright, uh, now he has a Rayquaza active with no energy on it. So I'm just going to set up another Dialga. Deafen 
and he won't be able to switch out or anything like that. Um, I'm pretty safe. He uses speed gain again the next turn. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. There's no way you're going to hit four heads again. And heads, 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 heads. Four more energy. And he uses Sky Judgment again for 150, and I lose the game. So, uh, I lost to Rayquaza. I'm sure that's the game that you wanted me to bring up. Um, from Ben Danzu, have you met any Asian players at World? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you meet Asian players every year. Uh, there's always people from Japan there. Uh, I had the honor of hosting Top Gun Invitational this year, which included Yamato and um, Yuta Komatsuda. So we had two Japanese players in that event, and we got to interact with them a little bit. So anytime you can interact with people from other countries, I think it's cool. And I actually got to interview Yamato. So, uh, yes, I've met plenty of people from Asian countries. From Age Guerra 21, if someone was playing Durant, does that not mean the other person can just stall all day to win on time? A prize penalty will only hurt you, stopping you from being able to play Twins. Now, um, I mean, technically you could do this once, just try to stall for time, but stalling is something that judges have cracked down on quite a bit. Um, it's kind of difficult to actually stall out against Durant, and if it's if it seems like you're doing it very obviously, uh, you will actually get a game loss. Uh, there's not just prize penalty, that's your only penalty, uh, those things escalate. And if you're intentionally trying to just stall someone out, and it's obvious, then you are going to get a game loss. I think this actually happened at Nationals this past year with somebody. Um, they said something like, I'm intentionally making this go, or I'm intentionally stalling, so this will go to a Game 3 sudden death. And uh, the judge kind of overheard that and said, okay, you're intentionally stalling, you get a game loss. So, um you will get punished for stalling. <laughs> right, um, from Oregon. What do you think of EXs? Which ones do you think will have the largest effect on the format? Um, EXs are way too good. They're way too strong. They're going to dominate the format, I think, for the time being. Um, Mewtwo will have the largest effect. And then I think Zekrom is also good. Not too sure about Reshram and Kyurem or Shaman, but Mewtwo for sure, and then Zekrom probably are going to be the two biggest ones. Uh oh. <clears throat> now we're getting into it. <laughs> From SoCal Matt. Who do you think is the best player on the top cup besides yourself? And who's number two and three, too? Um, so I won't rank myself. You're asking me to rank the other three guys, um, which I'll do in terms of, I guess, results. Um, so I think Pramline has had the best results overall. Uh, he did take second at Worlds a couple years ago, and he's also done consistently well. He's probably one of the best players in the world, so uh, I'll give him that. Probably rank him above the other two, but you have to realize when I'm saying above the other two, this is like a very, very slight difference. It's not like, oh, he's so much better than everybody else. Um, no, everybody is very, very good. So it's just slight differences. Um, I guess from there, Drew has better results than Krim. Uh, however, Drew hasn't really tested a whole lot this season, so he's kind of not in a loop. I mean, he's just kind of showed up and played six corners and one <laughs> in Ohio. Uh, he's also started working, so I think... He'll start to fall off a little bit when he doesn't test as much. So, uh, I think in the meantime, we'll put Krim there if he decides to play more. We'll rank him a little above Drew, just because Drew isn't going to play as much, I don't think. Um, but we'll see. I don't really know. Uh, it's hard to rank people in Pokemon. 
it's hard to make like a top 10 list of players, so it's hard to rank other people. But if we're just going by results, then we'll do Pramalot, then Drew, then Krim. Because Krim is the bottom of the ladder on everything when it comes to results. Uh, from Skylar Knopp, if you had a time machine but could only travel to the past or future, which would you choose? Uh, I think probably the past. I'm sure everybody has something in the past that they wish they could change or tell themselves to do. Uh, so yeah, we'll go with the past. From Daniel Musgrave, how often do you get approached at tournaments? Uh, honestly, not too much. Every once in a while, people come up to me and say hi, which I appreciate. Uh, people ask me to sign autographs every once in a while, which is also cool. Uh, but honestly, not too much. People are respectful, I guess. Uh, I don't mind if people come and say hi, introduce themselves. I wish more people would, but um, at the same time, it can be annoying if people like follow you around um, and don't give you space. So um, enough people do come up to me. And I appreciate everybody that does. From Age Gehira, what was the first Pokemon card you ever received? Mine was a Lapras. Um, I think mine is kind of lame, but um, it was the Machamp from the starter kit, the base set one. Um, I think it was the Machamp, just because... The first thing I got was that starter kit, so I guess the one that sticks out of there is Machamp, and I'll go with that. Uh, from Pokemon Who, is there a website that shows what gets top four at each tournament? Um, it's hard to keep track of all this stuff when it's city championships and there are hundreds and hundreds of these tournaments around the country and the world um, for the major tournaments we have been keeping track we've kept track of uh, what did well at regionals this year and the Prague Cup as well so our website thetopcut.net has done that uh, otherwise pokegym.net their forums keeps track of that stuff so uh, there's not official coverage like Pokemon really doesn't do that too well um, I mean, they will for Nationals every once in a while. They have the World's decks that they print, but they don't even say what decks made top four in each division at Worlds. So, um, that's why we have our sites that try to cover that kind of stuff. MJ92, how much money do you spend... Okay, this is literally the question. How much money do you spend to Pokemon TCG? Uh, but I think it's how much money do you spend to play it. I honestly don't spend that much. Most of the money goes into traveling to events. Um, I mean, this year alone I've gone to the Florida Marathon, which was kind of a vacation, but I guess it was for Pokemon too. Um, just traveling to events, uh, driving places, going to nationals, getting the hotel for that, going to Worlds, flying out there, uh, getting the hotel for that. Most of the money comes from traveling. The cards aren't actually that expensive. I mean, you do have to buy cards. There's a cost to it, but it's not super expensive. I really don't spend much money on cards. Um, I have my own cards, but I end up borrowing cards a lot. And I end up winning cards from tournaments, so I don't buy a whole lot. But when there's stuff like Next Destinies where you have a bunch of huge cards, you're probably going to have to buy them. And I'm going to have to bite the bullet and buy my Mewtwo, I guess. From X Yogi Bear 11 how many Pikachus are in your room? Hmm. Uh, well, there's that big one back there. There's the blanket that has the Pikachu on it right there. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there is another Pikachu back there. You can see the ear a little bit. So I think uh, I might also have another one from Worlds, the little plush ones. So there might be four. Not too sure. I'll go with four. <clears throat> from Professor Ace what state championships do you plan on going to um I haven't really I started to look at it but I wasn't really sure I'll go to Illinois and Wisconsin for sure uh but it depends the third week 
whether or not there's one close to me. The farthest I'll go is like, uh, I was thinking about whether or not I would go to Ohio, but I don't know if I would or not. Um, if Indiana or Michigan were somewhat, or were on that, excuse me, that week where uh, it's not Illinois or Wisconsin, then I'll, I'll go to one of those, maybe Iowa. I don't know what the schedule's like yet. From Pokemon Who again. Have you seen any unexpected decks come out of nowhere and place in the top four of any cities this year? Not really that I can think of. Um, most of the decks are pretty figured out by this point. Uh, I can't really think of anything that just blew me away. I was like, wow, how did that deck get here? For the most part, it's been pretty standard and straightforward. So, no, not really. Uh, from Top Cut Fan, are you seeing how immense Blake Griffin is right now? And, um, no, Sammy, I am doing this. I'm not watching Blake Griffin. From Skylar Knopp, what goals would you like to accomplish in the next five years? Now, my personal goal would be to do well at Worlds. I think that's really the one thing left for me to do as a player. Uh, I have not done well at Worlds ever. I made top 16 once, and that was already eight years ago. So, um, yeah, doing well at Worlds is my personal goal. Other than that, uh, our goals are with the top cut, which would be improving tournament coverage. Eventually, we want to uh, stream live from tournaments. We want to do better tournament coverage, make things more professional. We also want to run our own independent tournament circuit. Uh, just whatever we can do to grow Pokemon, um, we want just to expand the game as much as possible, bring more prizes into the game, more attention, higher production value for videos and tournament coverage. Those are our main goals in the future, and hopefully we can do that. We started off with a good... I mean, we've only been around for, I think it's been six or seven months by now. It hasn't even been a year. So, um, in that short amount of time, we've been able to do a lot. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next couple of years with Top Gun, especially this year. Hopefully we can make some big steps forward. <laughs> From Card Captor, do you call Pokemon your job and deduct expenses on your tax returns? Uh, no, I have not done yet. I have not done that. Uh, maybe since now we're doing the whole Top Cut thing, I could look into that, but I have not done that, no. From Pokemon Who, what spring regionals will you go to? Uh, the one in Wisconsin is just the closest one to me. Age Guerra twenty one. Are there any fantastic players you have seen at Worlds or Nats who just started playing, or are they mostly players who have been in the competitive scene for a few years? For um, the most part, the players who have been around for a while are the ones who do the best. Um, it takes a little bit for people to learn how to play the game. Um, there's just kind of a learning curve associated with the game first year players usually don't do too well and if they do they have a rocky season at some point so uh, I can't think of anybody who has just started playing first of all I don't even know many people who just started playing um, much less people who just started playing and are doing very well at tournaments so um, I don't really know but I'm sure there are people who are up and coming I just can't think of them off the top of my head <laughs> from Soviet Greyhound, what is the best booster box you've ever gotten? Uh, I don't really remember booster boxes, but when I was younger and uh, Team Rocket had come out, not Team Rocket Returns, the first Team Rocket set, uh, I went to my local card shop, uh, I bought a couple packs of Team Rocket, I actually remember I bought three packs, and in the first pack I saw... I just looked through the cards and I was like, oh wow, I got a Dark Raichu, um, which was the secret rare for the set. And then I looked at the uncommons, 
and there were three dark dragonites. Um, now, at the time, I thought, man, how unlucky is that? Even though dark dragonite is a rare, this card sucks. I mean, it is terrible. Um, the attack was just awful. Uh, the power was maybe okay, but uh, it had 70 hit points for a stage 2, and it was just bad. Um, and then, after a while, uh, I actually got another pack out of the out of that set of three packs, another pack, another Dark Raichu, and then three more of those Dark Dragonites. So, um, I thought, well, how, unlu how unlucky am I to get these six horrible cards in two packs? And then when I got home, I looked at the numbers on the cards, and I realized, huh, this is the number for the hollow, but it's the non-hollow. And it turned out to actually be uh, an actual pretty rare error card. I had a bunch of, I gave a couple away, I still have one or two left, but um, those are the best packs I ever got. Uh, they were upsetting at the time because Dark Dragonite was horrible, but um, once I realized that these things are actually rare, <laughs> um, that was cool. from B10003. Do you see the Mew Vanillux uh, bird thing, which would be on Pheasant? Um, deck, is that good? Uh, or will it fall off and not be talked about after Mewtwo? Now, first of all, I didn't actually like this deck. I played it for the first day of Florida Marathon. Uh, the deck is strong when it sets up, and then eventually you just keep locking them with Vanillux, and then on Pheasant's Fly prevents them from attacking Mew, uh, but for me it just took too long to set up. By the time I was set up I was already down like four prizes or five prizes, and then if you flip double tails on the fly once, your Mew gets knocked down and you lose. So I was not a big fan of that deck to begin with. It might become better since you have less prizes to take against a Mewtwo EX. I'm not too sure how that's going to work, but... Uh, I really wasn't a fan of the deck in the first place, so it's hard to tell. Uh, from Say a Sandstorm, have you started looking for jobs yet after graduation? No, I have not, and I need to do that. Uh, MJ92, what's your opinion on the Vile Plume Victini Vanillix deck? Um, depends on which version. I actually like the Stage 2 version better. I don't really like either one, because they're kind of slow, and depend on coin flips a lot. I had a bad experience with Vanillix, so I'm not a big fan of the deck. Uh, doo -doo -doo. From Truck Effect, what are the chances of having an official booth at Worlds or Nationals to do interviews and commentary? Uh, that's an interesting question, which is something I would love to have set up. Um, I mean, it all depends on our relationship with uh, Pokemon USA and how much they're willing to let us do tournament coverage for them but um, that's something I would certainly love to have as soon as possible I would love to be able to just do commentary um, I mean if it means giving up the game uh, playing in big events I think at this point I would uh, volunteer to actually do the commentary if it helps Pokemon grow bigger uh, I've kind of decided I would rather do that. But, um, yeah, I mean, as soon as possible, I'd love to do that. Obviously, I love playing, but I want to help the game grow. That's why we started this whole uh, Top Cut initiative thing. So, uh, yeah, that's something I would really look forward to. Anything that could really increase the production value. And um, I would love to do, like, professional-looking games sometime soon. Um that's one of our goals. Alright, so we got a couple more questions and then we will move on to Pokemon Flavor Text Trivia. Um, so we'll, we have two more questions. From Bleak JP7, most expensive card you've ever bought? Um... I don't really know. I don't really buy expensive cards too often. The most expensive thing I might have bought was 
Luxray Level X, and at the time it was cheap. <laughs> uh, it was like twenty dollars when I bought it. So uh, I don't really buy expensive cards. I try to get them before they get super expensive. Uh, actually, the most expensive card I bought was Tropical Beach. I take that back. I bought a Tropical Beach for eighty dollars. So that is the most expensive card I've ever bought. And from Sable House, why are Kyle's so dominant at this game? I don't know. Must be something to do with the name. Um, I don't think any Kyles have done well at Worlds, though. Um, I know there was 2010 where there were two Kyle S's in the top four in Nationals. So, um, I guess historically Kyle is a good name to have when you play Pokemon. Jason is also a very good name to have. <laughs> so, um, that'll wrap it up for the Q&A section. Uh, we'll take a little break here, and then get back, and we will do Pokemon Flavor Text Trivia, where I read off the flavor text, and you have to guess what card it is, and, uh, it's the game Jason Kaczynski played last night, so, um, it was a lot of fun, we'll try that again tonight, so we'll take like a two or three minute break, and we'll get to that. Should be some fun, and just stick around in the chat, talk with people, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 